Hi there, I am Kathleen McGivern and I am Ms. Artastic and in this episode we are talking about five Christmas uh, art lesson ideas for choice and flexible art mediums. Um, we're again diving in on this whole concept of more choice-based art um, lessons this year um, and flexible mediums because again uh, education is changing um, and we want to give more power to the students but also teachers are super exhausted and we well I am very aware of that and I want to make or give you lots of ideas so that way you can make it work for you wherever you are at this point of time I know that at this point probably when you're listening to this near the Christmas break you're probably like super tired and I totally get it so yeah let's dive on in to five Christmas our ideas with flexible and choice art mediums you're listening to the Miss Artastic podcast inspiration for art teachers here's your host Kathleen McGivern Now, before we begin, make sure that you sign up right now for my free Making Art with Kids Challenge, where I challenge you to make art with kids. And I am taking all kinds of pressure off because I'm offering a free art lesson that will teach line art and felt marker painting. So there's really no excuse for not making this happen. My friend, you are going to love it because it's gonna come with the lesson plan, handout, literally everything you need to teach a gecko line art project. And best of all, you will walk away feeling confident and your students are going to love it. So make sure you check it out by going to www.artasticcollective.com forward slash challenge right now and sign up for this free challenge. And by the way, we are now one month away from the Artastic Collective membership opening one month away. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it's opening in January. If you're listening to this, you get exclusive information on that. It is opening in January, my friend. January! So make sure you put in your phone calendar or wherever you keep important information that the Artastic Collective is opening for enrollment for educators January. Very first week, it's going to open and it's only open for a limited time. So I only open enrollment two times a year, one time in January, one time in August to kind of match the different back to school times for different people all over the world. And yes, every month new art lessons are going to be released to your Artastic uh, library. Um, things that you see in my TPT store will be available to you at a much more affordable monthly rate or yearly rate as a subscription. So it's kind of like net, kind of like Netflix for teachers but with like art lessons. So that way you can have the art art lessons that you need, art resources that you need, all that jazz at a very affordable cost. So check it out artasticcollective.com. Make sure that you get on that wait list if you are an art instructor, art educator, uh, homeschool parent wanting art lessons, get on there. All right. So now we have Christmas coming. It's chaos. So we're going to dive in onto five Christmas art project or lesson ideas that you can do simply and easily in your classroom that again, use choice art mediums. It's flexible, uh, perfect for choice based art in the Christmas sort of theme um, and art education. So I have a bunch of easy uh, to do and prep ideas that can use choice art mediums and can allow students to really immerse themselves in some Christmas vibes. So again, grab those art making mediums of your choice, of course. And let's get into these Christmas ready-made, simple and engaging art lesson ideas for your amazing classroom. So idea number one is Christmas elves art project. So this idea can be done with any age. And I think that uh, anytime that we have an opportunity, again, for kids to immerse themselves in an observational experience and we have the means to, then we should allow it. So in this art lesson idea, I think that we need to let students experience some Christmas workshop flavor to bring out the sellies and creative juices, assuming all your students celebrate Christmas. You might want to 
bring multiple flavors into it. So if you have different holidays going on, you can bring in other cultural experiences as well. So just be like aware of the different cultures in your classroom is what I'm saying. Okay, so immersive brainstorm time. Take your classroom projector and find a YouTube video of like Santa's workshop. Um, if it has audio that isn't music, just hit mute and then like put it at the back of the room and project it into the classroom, like instead of like on a screen, similar to something like a Van Gogh museum, immersive experience. Um, for music, you can instead play like whatever Christmas kids playlist that you have. Um, just to swap it out if it's some random thing. You can even put on like a Christmas movie or workshop thing, whatever, some something. Um, and then you can always swap out the audio so they're not watching a movie instead. They're having Christmas music. You can make it work. Just be creative. Um, yeah, so then you're going to let your kids walk around in quotation mark Santa's workshop as though they are an elf themselves um, without talking and let them spend like three to five minutes visualizing what one of Santa's elves could look like. Explain that once they have an idea, they should quietly return to their seat and make a quick sketch either in their sketchbook or on a scrap paper of their elf, of their elf. So they're designing an elf, they're bringing in that stem or steam kind of mindset, applying design to it, they're visualizing and they are really creating their own uh, version of an elf. So afterwards, they can create an artwork inspired by the immersive experience and immersive brainstorm of one of Santa's elves. And you can challenge them to recreate the image of Santa's elves and experiment with a new idea. So you can let them choose art mediums themselves or you can pick the mediums um, or let them pick from a few art mediums that you are willing to allow them to choose from. So again, we're going to let it be flexible, let it be choice. You're making this easy for you and for the kids. At this point, it is survival mode. <laughs> so you can do this with any art mediums. It will take a few art classes and you know that kids will be developing a strong sense of like observational skills. They're going to be highly engaged in the art making process because you've totally like bumped them up with this like immersive experience. And of course, after all that immersion, they will be tingling with creativity and Christmas art ideas. So again, we're watching, we're planting the seeds, watching it grow. This is a perfect idea for anybody wanting to implement more choice-based art in their classrooms. And really, any teacher can do this with little prep as, as a lot of the art making is self-directed. Of course, for more art lesson ideas, you can visit my Teachers Pay Teachers store, Ms. Artastic, or join my art teacher membership, the Artastic Collective, first week of January 2022, or any year in January. <laughs> if you're listening to this and it's 2023 or 2024, I always am open January and August. January and August. You can't join any time. So, yeah. So check it out. Uh, idea number two is a Santa Claus art project. You can interpret Santa Claus however you want. Okay? So I will talk about that in this. I'm not being exclusive to red and white wearing Santa Claus. Okay, here we go. So want to increase engagement and have your students focused while the Christmas spirit takes over and let's be honest, causes all kinds of disengagement from the classroom as honestly, they're just too excited and I can't blame them. So like, just roll with it. No problem. Combat those Christmas jitters by letting them make some Santa Claus art. You can do resist painting Santa Clauses with white wax crayons or oil pastels and then like paint the background with Christmas colors using tempera paint cakes or watercolor paint. Or if you have liquid tempera paint, just like water it down till it is liquidy or watercolor like. I do that all the time when I don't have access to watercolor paints. I just like really water it down. You can do that with acrylics too. Just water it down till it's a wash, essentially. Of course, um, Christmas colors are also complementary colors, red and green. So you can sneak 
in a lesson on color theory without them realizing it. So it could be a quick lesson and you can talk about how they create high contrast. If you're exhausted by this point, and I am sure um, you are, you can totally find, uh, I'm guessing, I don't actually know that, it's not, that's not a fact, but I'm guessing, you can find a YouTube video on complementary colors that can get the job done in a matter of minutes while grasping their attention that is focused on the upcoming holiday break. And I'm sure your attention is there as well. So if you want more choice-based play, you can provide students with a choice of Christmas color background paper, so construction paper, and just let them choose between liquid temper paint, white soft pastels, or uh, oil pastels, and let them create their own Santa Claus design on the paper. Ask them to really imagine what Father Christmas or Saint Nicholas or Santa Claus or Pierre Noel uh, might really look like from their culture. But speaking of culture, we want to be culturally sensitive. So if they don't have Santa Claus or they don't celebrate Christmas, keep this in mind. So they could create a figure from their culture. They could create a symbol of their culture, of a holiday in their culture. Maybe they celebrate something else at this time of year. You could do winter, right? Sub it out. It's choice-based and we should let students explore their own culture and their own identity. Um, if you have a classroom iPad or tablet, this is like the time when you allow them to do research. If a student doesn't celebrate Christmas, let them create something that makes sense to them and their culture or illustrate their family if they're spending time with them over the holidays. Be sensitive to every student. You can be assured you will have a variety of Santa artworks when supplying a choice of these three mediums. Your role would be to demonstrate which e what each medium might look like as a sample on construction paper and show how to use each medium, but not show how to make the Santa Claus artwork or whatever culturally appropriate creation they are creating. You are supporting um, with the mediums like a studio tech and the kids can do the visualizing, the experimenting and the creating. So this makes it flexible. Again, it doesn't have to be Santa Claus. I recognize not, not everybody has, is celebrating that. Or so what I'm saying is pick something that is the symbol of whatever makes sense for one's culture and identity. And that will be the uh, focus. So it could be easily, um, this can be easily done for every individual because you're just there as a tech showing some mediums and they are creating um, artwork that's more meaningful to them and that makes sense to them. <laughs> Moving on. Reindeer art projects. Another idea would be to let your students create reindeer portraits. Portraits, oh yeah. That will be the subject of their art piece and then let them create or draw their choice of reindeer in their choice of art making style. So this can be done with any age. You can, ha if you have primaries, this is a great time to pull out some cotton swabs and then let them do some like fine motor practice by letting them dip swabs into white paint and then stamp on white dots onto the artwork after drawing to create snow texture in the background. Reindeer in snow, I mean like how cute is that? And really, any age when would enjoy that. So like older kids could do the exact same thing, right? They can make snow, but your expectations would be different of them, right? So you can, the same process, you could take the same art project that you would do with littles, but then you change the expectation. I can ask somebody in grade two to do a reindeer portrait, and I can ask somebody to do a reindeer portrait who is in grade 12. But think about the very different complexity that would be involved. If you ask a grade 12 student to do a reindeer portrait, it's going to look very 
much different. And if you allow them to pick their own mediums as well, you could get some really interesting artworks. At the same time, you could also have any age do snow dot um, styled complex snowflakes, right? Somebody in kindergarten is focusing on just making dots because that's where they're at. But somebody who's in grade nine or 10 can really make complex dot snowflake designs. And there's lots of different cultures that have used dots to create artworks. Um, I'm thinking of indigenous peoples of Australia and their cultural artworks that are created with dots and similar mark making techniques. And I'm also thinking about like artists like Alma Woodsy Thomas who bring in dot designs. So you can also talk about that with those older students and just get them to think about it and then challenge them to make dot snowflake designs as their background for their reindeer portraits. So you can think about how you can take one idea, but then propose it to kids in very different ways. And it's the expectation that's going to change, not necessarily the art project. See, if we're giving them art projects that are pre-designed, predetermined, it's going to only look like one outcome. But if there is no a singular outcome, the um, realm of possibilities becomes um, abstract, it becomes more um, expansive. So just keep that in mind. So whatever grades you're teaching, and you might be teaching a lot of different grades, you could do the same concept of idea, is what I'm saying, with somebody who's in kindergarten. And you can also do that same art lesson with somebody in grade eight. 100% you could do this. The quality and the visuals will be different, but it will be meaningful and unique to each and every single student with this choice-based approach. Because they're going to be creating art at their own level. And of course, at their own level is going to change depending on their age and experience. And we're teaching, remember, we're always teaching the student, not necessarily the grade. Okay, so if you want, if you do art, or sorry, if you are looking for pre-planned art Um, projects that are in the Christmas theme. I of course have a large selection of fully planned Christmas art lessons in my Teachers Pay Teacher store, Ms. Artastic, and you can check them out there. Another idea would be to do Christmas tree art projects. So you could challenge your students to create an artwork of a Christmas tree using at least five mediums to encourage them to experiment and to be creative. So this can be done with any age. However, if you're doing this with primary, reduce it to three art mediums. Direct one of the mediums to be like magazine clippings or scrap paper pieces or because it's Christmas, you could use Christmas wrapping paper pieces. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so anyways, then you can put up pictures or like a YouTube video clip of Christmas trees or ones being decorated. So like hit mute on videos and then play your own Christmas music in the background. And then like let them create choice-based art by creating their own Christmas tree inspired by the picture or video, but using a variety of art making mediums and materials. So they must include five or three for primary art mediums. So we can ask the students to really think outside the box and move outside their comfort zone. And this can be done with most ages from elementary all the way up to high school. Again, it's all about expanding creative thinking skills. I should really hire somebody to do that. Okay, so Christmas ornaments, um, but sustainable design. Oh yeah. Um, You probably heard my rant last episode when I went on a huge rant about sustainability as I was facing and uh, well, I recorded it, if you listened, during a climate crisis. Well, the second or third climate crisis that year. So much, so much going on in my little bubble of the world, in addition to a pandemic. Anyway, 
Uh, Christmas ornaments, sustainable design. Challenge students to make their own design. A Christmas ornament using cardboard or any recycled objects and paper and any other choice art mediums. No follow along crafts, my friends. Challenge them to explore and go deeper into the project to create and design their own Christmas ornament. Um, I feel, uh, yeah, so confused right now. Oh yeah, for older students, encourage them to add a little artwork on it. So like, in addition to the creation of the ornament, they could put like a miniature art piece on there. I'm thinking like middle school, like they could do like cute little acrylic miniature acrylic paintings or watercolors or pencil designs, whatever, and add that on top, right? And then you can like put a nice little spray, a nice little coat of varnish and boa bam. So cute. So of course, this is a fun, engaging art lesson idea that can be again done with anything from a recycling bin. So this is again encouraging reusing and sustainability and this is teaching sustainable design during a month of extreme consumerism. And I'm not against consumerism, but I'm also against like surviving the next um, like well remainder of my hopeful timeline on this planet. So, and then also like I'm thinking about my students who will hopefully like I'm just thinking about their lives and I want it to be good for them and their children one day. So that's why I'm pretty big on <laughs> sustainability. I'm trying to be reasonable here. Okay. Ready-made Christmas art projects can also be found on the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store. So if you're like looking for art lessons that are ready to use that include all the lesson plans, handouts, assessment, and more, make sure you check out my Christmas art lessons, uh, my Christmas artivity booklets. Uh, remember I had that new artivity booklet line and I have that new roll and draw line. I have Christmas roll and draws, my friend. Oh yeah, if you're just wanting some like fun art and those can be easily left with subs either of those can be left with subs they're very um student directed and i am a big believer in visual step-by-steps because i worked at a school for over six years that had extraordinarily diverse needs um so <laughs> from that experience I like to make things both uh, visual and I uh, also include word instructions, both, because that way it's just a lot more accessible for all needs of students. Anyway, you can find all of those in my Teachers Pay Teachers store or with your Artastic Collective membership. Remember that opens on um, January, first week of January, limited time. May I will see you there and then you'll be part of my exclusive membership where you'll get access to all my art resources added to your library every month. Uh, and it grows for two years. So it's basically the most culturally diverse art curriculum out there. Uh, like that is my thing. I try to make it um, just like I'm very aware of teachers needs and I'm constantly trying to make it something that uh, teachers need that speaks to a diverse range of styles and, and cultures. Uh, I am aware of what my own artistic style looks like when I create my, my own art for me. And I don't want that to be my art lessons. I want my art lessons to have lots of different flavor and then also be something that kids can add their own artistic flavor to. Um, not all art should be cutesy and look great for displays it's nice when it does but all art should speak to students interests and like a range of artistic styles as well um i have a background in art so i started off going to emily carr university of art and design if you've been following me you know this um and then i became a teacher and got my bachelor of education now i am misertastic and a professional artist 
full time. So like my, I, my whole thing, my whole life is now spent in an art studio. That's all I do. I go to art shows. My friends are artists in my community. Um, so like my going out is going to an art gallery opening. Like I am embedded in art and culture as it evolves. So um, that's kind of my background. Um, I was a teacher for a decade, more than a decade, more than a decade. So yeah, uh, but I'm ever looking to evolve my membership and I just wanted to, I want to create art lessons that are useful for art teachers, but also allow a future generation of artists to evolve, but like also in their own style, if that makes sense. Um, as somebody who went to school and like school for as a child for me it was a challenge probably because as you notice like it's hard for me to stay focused but like also um I stayed like attached to school because of art um that's kind of like what kept me going and then like I attended university because of art so my whole world revolves around making art and I just I want kids to feel that too and I know as art educators or people who if you're listening to this you are interested in some degree in art education so yeah so if you're interested in that and make sure you check out my membership the artistic collective I also have um different courses that are de- being developed and that I add there I have a youtube channel if you're looking for some just like fun cartoons that are five to ten minutes long I have drawing for littles playlists and drawing for bigger kids playlists I put them out both of those um two YouTube videos a week on my YouTube channel Ms. Artastic make sure you follow me everywhere and if you just want some grab and go art lessons uh and you're not an Artastic collective membership you're just a general teacher or whatever um homeschool parent studio instructor I got my teachers pay teacher store so check it out there and that being said Happy holidays, my lovely friend. I wish you all the best. Merry Christmas. Um, I wish you a peaceful break. And I hope that your 2022 is going to be extra fabulous. Um, And thank you so much for supporting me this year. It's been a very crazy year. It's been very overwhelming (laughs) for me. been so much so much honestly so much I've gone through heat domes I've gone through uh changing from two careers to just one career no that's more like three careers to one I just I just needed I was working 24 7 so I really just couldn't do that anymore um you could probably understand uh (laughs) that it was no longer I was not it was not healthy (laughs) to work 24 7 and have no no time to myself so i'm just going to be a full-time artist and a full-time misartastic so i'm just down to two careers and that's much more healthy um yeah wildfires and now right now again i'm sitting and recording this during a flood crisis disaster to the extreme you probably saw it on tv british columbia flood yeah it's cool anyway have a lovely remainder of your 2021 make sure that you spread kindness uh just smile at any moment that is smile worthy and like celebrate anything worth celebrating like anything just do it we just have to be thankful for anything and every moment and that's all i can say about that yeah i appreciate you uh my friend um And that's all I have. Yeah, I just appreciate you. So thank you very much. And I will see you uh, with the new episodes in 2022. This is Kathleen McGivern, Ms. Artastic, signing off.